Hello and welcome to how to use the sine wave in your materials. So what is a sine wave? You may be familiar with sine waves from school. And a sine wave is a continuous wave that ro rolls up from 0 to 1, back down to 0, through to minus 1 and back to 0 in a single cycle. It's a continuous wave meaning it will just do this forever and ever. And in this smooth periodic oscillation of this line is what we can use to make cool graphical effects in our materials. So let's create a material to showcase this. I'm going to call this one sine wave test and go inside of here. Now the first thing you need is the sine wave itself. So you just search for SIN, you'll see sine come up here. There's also cosine as well, and cosine is similar, but it's a slightly different wave, but it is sort of the same shape. Uh, more on that later. So our sine wave here has an in one input, one output. The input here will be time in this case, because we want the value of uh, the sine wave at different points in time. Now, if a sine wave is going between um, minus one and one, we're going to take a plot of that within the second of the wavelength. So think about the cycle is like one second. So it's going through the whole cycle in one second. What, what point will it be those values? So at zero seconds, it would be at zero. At one second, it would be at zero. But at 0 0.5, it will also be at zero because it's going up and down and through the line. So this feeds into here because we want it to be continuous. Time is a continuous thing, and it's going to go into the sine wave and output a value. Now this value, as I said, is between minus one and one. So we can use this as an alpha for lots of different things. So for example, we can put in a linear interpolate, or LERP for short, and plug it into the alpha. Now I'm going to linear interpolate uh, 0 and 1, which is white and uh, black and white, and put those into base color. And we'll see it now flash between black and white. And because it is a sine wave, you do have this natural curve shape. So it's not going to be a harsh change. It'll be a smooth transitional change. Now, if we want to make the sine wave slower, what we do is change the input of time going into our sine wave. We need to make it longer. So what we do is we take the time value here, and we're going to multiply it by a small value. So smaller than 1. So let's do 0 0.1. And that means it will take a te uh, 10 times as long to go through the wave. And you can see that going on here. Now obviously we're just changing color here, but this can be used to change anything on here at all, including world position offset. So if you wanted to, you could put this into our world position offset here and it will now move. However, one thing you'll notice here is that it isn't actually moving much. In fact, in fact it's only moving one tiny little pixel at a time, or one unit at a time. So to increase that, you take the sine wave here and you multiply the final output by whatever distance you want it to go by. So let's say we multiply it by a vector and we'll put into the Z, which is B, uh, 50, and then zero out the X and Y, which is R and G, and then put that into world position offset. This will now rise up and down like so. So it's very useful for creating things like that. And we can also plug that straight into the color, put it alpha, and it will now change color whilst it's rising up, and then go back down to black. So notice how it's staying at white uh, for a lot less time than it is black. Now the reason why that's the case is because the lerp, the lerp is clamping it between zero and one. So the negative values are being rounded up to zero. Therefore it gives the impression of being at black for longer than not. So how do you combat this? How would you make this not do that? Well, we're going to take our sine wave here and we're going to add a value to it. We're going to go add and we're going to add one to it. So if you think about the minus value, minus one, minus one add one becomes zero. However, the roof of this, which is two now, because we added one to it, and that is too much for our lerp. Remember, lerp has to go between zero and one. So what we're going to do here is divide this by two. And what this will do now is give us a nice even spread between black and white as it transitions between one and the other. Not favoring one and not favoring the other. It's going in through variations of gray up to pure white and then back down. Okay. 
So we're adding here to add an offset, bringing the whole sine wave up and then dividing it to make it squish it down to fit within our range. And the sine wave can be used for all sorts of cool effects. So we can also clamp the value. We can also do other sort of multiplication to it, division to it, subtraction to it, to really change what the value is doing. Ultimately, what you're trying to do here is trying to manipulate it to give you a nice smooth transitioning periodical uh, value to allow you to do things like this. So you think about where you can apply this. You can apply it to lighting, for example. You can also apply it to uh, hovering things like this. It could also be done to make things move in like a spinning rotation. Uh, it could be done for all sorts of cool different effects. And this doesn't have to be colors. This could be different materials. It's going between different textures, anything at all. So there's lots of cool uses you can use for a sine wave. And as I said, cosine wave is very similar. We just put that instead of there. And as you see, it looks the same to us, but it's actually doing something a bit different. It is going at basically at a different rate. Um, it's a bit hard to describe without visual aid, but it is going slightly differently. Now, there is a third one, which is tan, do tangent. And this one is very different because it will go between minus one and one, but then it won't go back down. It will just teleport back to minus one and it'll go back up to one. So to show you that in action, you get this sort of motion where it sort of like comes up and then zips up. Okay, so it's sort of a curve in the middle and then up. So it flattens out in the middle and then rises, which is kind of cool. Um, but we can do really cool stuff with tangent as well. Rather than adding to it, we could do something called an abs to it. So it makes the negative values positive again. So if we put the abs in uh, straight into the alpha, and then straight into multiply, you get this effect where it'll go up and then back down again. You get sort of bouncy ball effect. Okay, so it's an interesting different effect you can do with these different signs uh, and cosine and tangent waves. So experiment with them, see what you can do with them. Um, and there are lots of really practical uses for them. If you like this how-to video and want to see more how-tos and other content, head over to patreon.com forward slash ryanlady, where your donation gets you access to all my video content before anyone else. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who supported me over there, as well as everyone on YouTube members as well. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.